This is Twit. All right, I'm here with my good friend, Mr. Michael Sasser. Michael's a boudoir photographer down in beautiful, sunny Southern California. So those two things, you should already be jealous of him. <laughs> so boudoir photographer in sunny Southern California. Michael Sasser, welcome back to the show, man. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Uh, it's going great. Speaking of sunny, sunny Southern kind of got outside, got a little exercise earlier today. Um, I've been trying to get out as the weather gets, not that it ever gets super cold here, but you try and take advantage when you can. Absolutely. I've been doing the same thing. Just sort of, I've been, I'm up to walking five miles a day, man. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, uh, I, I blame it all on this Apple watch because it bugs yeah. me and, and makes me feel bad when I don't do it. So it works. whatever it takes, man, a little guilt, a little shame. Yep. It's like, yeah, you didn't close a ring today, Frederick. What's the matter with you? So, <laughs> no, it's all good. So you are, you are the, you know, one of the premier boudoir photographers down in Los Angeles and crushing it down there. So uh, you, like I said, you've been on the show before and I wanted to just have like a general check-in with you, make sure you're okay, see how you're doing amidst all this pandemic craziness. You're in a high touch kind of business down there shooting boudoir, obviously, that typically takes place, I'm guessing, in closed spaces, you know, and a lot of that can't happen without some safeguards. Where, where are things right now? How are you doing? You doing okay? Yeah. So uh, initially, you know, everything shut down. I didn't shoot for like four months. Um, but as I ended up just pushing, pushing my shoots back, I had a bunch of cancellations. A bunch of people ended up moving back to whatever other state they were from to spend time with their family or uh, weddings that got delayed. I actually just shot uh, somebody earlier this month who booked with me over a year ago. And she's like, I just want to be patient. I want to be comfortable or whatever. So we're in no rush. Just whenever we, you know, whenever we get to it, uh, works for me. And so I've basically been, um, I think, I think November, October, and November were my first shoot dates that started back up again, mm -hmm. but we're pretty much back to normal. Um, yeah, it's, it's mostly indoors. The new space that I'm in has, uh, some outdoor space that I shoot in. So we do about half the photo shoot outside, but you know, same as everybody, we're following the protocols, keeping masks on, um, and makeup artists is, you know, cleaning our brushes and, and wiping everything down. And, and, uh, we're staying as safe as safe as we can while still, you know, while still taking some great pictures. I love that. I love that. And you do take some great pictures. And, um, I want to just sort of talk about some of the, the big changes that, that have happened because of the, the COVID-19 lockdown and pandemic and all that. Yeah. So yeah, all the obvious stuff, makeup artists cleaning their brushes and all that, but what are some things that, that have permanently, do you think affected how you're going to be doing business in 2021 and beyond? So, um, yeah, I mean, I think it was, uh, <laughs> I think it was a weird year for everybody and actually kind of close to December, I felt, um, I don't know, like, a little claustrophobic about, uh, going into 2021. I basically had all of this time. I used to travel a lot. I used to shoot a lot and try to use my free time for travel. And when I couldn't travel anymore, um, as we got into 2021 and, and looking at booking people six, seven months out in advance, I just kind of, I almost didn't want to, I didn't want to book people. And I felt like I needed to guard my time. Um, and I only wanted to book people like a month or two in advance. And what it ended up, uh, leading to, I called a couple other photographers on this and we figured out, um, you know, what, what I needed to feel, um, comfortable and good about filling up my calendar. Now, obviously that's like, what a terrible problem to have. People want to book you, but, uh, at different times in your life, like one of my biggest fears is like being burnt out from photography. And mm -hmm. so what we decided to do was, uh, switch up my booking process to, uh, doing a wait list. So instead of being available to talk on the phone, whenever anybody emailed me, we switched to a waitlist system. And I, I say, we, it's, it's, it's just me. I'm, I'm the owner and runner and photographer. Royal, I, I do all the, the phone Royal calls but of the people that I spoke with. Um, so now I just take phone calls um, once a month, sometimes twice a month. And I pack them all into one day. And, and I only allow myself to book three months out in advance. Uh, so if somebody says, uh, let's see at the time, you know, if it's whatever day it is three months from now, you can book with me Four months. You have to stay on the wait list until I send an email out and then you can sign up for a phone call in order to book again. And this has freed up so much of my time. 
Um, and then the last thing that I've done is I've organized my shoots all to be back to back. So I don't do like, when are you free? What you tell me what weekend I say, like these dates are available and I all put them all together. So it's the same every time for me. And then after I'm done with those client shoots, I just order their albums at the end of the week. And then I've got the rest of the time to do stuff like this, to hopefully travel when that's available to come out with new course material. Um, But as far as, you know, I just, I felt, I don't know. I I was in a weird place, kind of November, December. And uh, I realized I needed to make a change to really, really feel good. And as a result, um, I feel like I can book more shoots now because mm-hmm. the time is just spent so much more efficiently. So we'll, we'll see what happens, but that's, that's kind of one of the things that I ended up changing in my business. Um, that's brilliant. Of, I mean, that, that's yeah. huge. That's huge because it, you know, you, I think of things like this from a, or, or even, even the way that I run interviews on this week in photo, it's usually like you said, Hey, when are you available? Can you do it on this day? And then of course there's always the time zone nonsense. You don't have to deal with that. Cause you, you know, most of your clients are local, I'm guessing, but local to California at least. But mm-hmm. when you're dealing with people all over the world, there's time zones and this, and when even you- if somebody emails you at like 5 PM and they're like, I'm really interested in a shoot. And you're like, is it too late to say you can get on the phone? Do you text them real quick to try and like their top of mind? Like you get on the phone, you want to close them. Do you want to leave it till tomorrow? What if they don't check their email that often? And I just, I'm sure there are plenty of people that I'm missing because they sign up and then they don't, you know, there's not a time to sign up for three weeks, but it's enough people that I'm able to book the number of shoots that I want to. Um, and there's enough photographers out there, you know, to go around. So um, mm. it's ended up really solving a lot of my own my own problems. It, it may not be a perfect system for everybody, but mm-hmm. for at my business, this is just like, it's, it's released so much of my mental, like check my email. Did I get an inquiry? Do I need to email them back? When am I free tomorrow? I'm planning on, you know, whatever tonight. And so do I have availability? My parents come in, t- my parents actually come in town tonight. So then I like, wouldn't be able to take phone calls for a week anyways. So just, man, it's been awesome. That is brilliant. I'm, I'm stealing that by the way. Cause I I've been sort of thinking in the, cause someone else said that, you know, they were like, maybe it was a podcast or something I was listening to, but someone was saying, yeah, you gotta stop that. Let's find a time to meet type thing. And take meetings on your own time, like dedicate a day or two that this is meeting day. I'm going to take meetings between these, this hour and this hour, and that's it. And then on this day, I'm going to do marketing stuff. And then on this day, I'm going to do, you know, online advertising stuff or whatever. And this day I'm not doing anything. I know one guy that was saying that he has a a day of the week. I think it's Thursday that it is just a sacred day. You know, it's like no work, nothing on the calendar. People say, well, that's the only day I can meet. And if we don't meet that day, you're going to lose a million dollars. He's like, well, I just lost a million dollars because I can't meet on that day. Are you the same way? Are you that militant about your schedule? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to be, um, yeah. but it, but it's tough. I've had a couple of referrals come in uh, from a client that I just shot that I had an amazing time with. It's her sister. And so I'm like, Oh, I really want, you know, I would love to book this. This person was amazing. I'm sure her sister's amazing. So yeah, let me just shoot her. You know, we'll just do a quick phone call, but it's been difficult to, to do that. Are you free? You know, I'm available tomorrow to chat. And then I don't get an email back from three days. And then it's like, okay, what's the next? And I was like, this is the whole reason why I went back to this system. So um, I've been better about, um, just everything, like leaving my phone and in the car when I go on a walk or, um, you know, different things like that, just kind of, it's very easy to just like, you love your work and you want to, you want to see it grow. And so to just, um, and consistency is really such an important part of having your business grow, but you can be consistent in, in sections of time. You don't have to always be, always be available. And I think it's, that's probably going to ring even more true for people with, you know, I don't, I'm a, I'm a single guy. I don't have to worry about, um, you know, kids when I wake up in the morning, getting them ready for school and the weekends, I'm going to spend time with family and things like that. So I, I have more free time than I would say the average person trying to run a photography business, but even still, I found it to be kind of, kind of necessary to, to make that a priority to, to take time, that time off. Yeah. 
it's funny you mentioned the phone thing and leaving the phone in the car or, or at home when you when you go on walks. I was I had a conversation many years ago. I was lucky enough to have a a, a short conversation with Ariana Huffington of the Huffington Post, and she she was at AOL for some reason, and I was I was I got a chance to sit in on a talk she was doing there, and she did this whole talk about not not going to bed with your cell phone in the same room as you are, mm -hmm. you know, or waking up. And the first thing you do is reach over and check your email before you even get up and brush your teeth or anything. She's like, it needs to be in a separate room and the room needs to be sacred. Do you subscribe to that as well? Are you, uh, is your phone on the night scan on the nightstand wireless charger when you go to sleep? Yeah, the phone's on the, it's funny. I actually got a, uh, a wireless charger to plug in on my dresser. So at least it wouldn't be next to my bed. Yeah. And uh, it looks beautiful. It's a wood one. So it like blends in and I have not once left my phone on that charger. It just sits overnight, not being charged is next to my nightstand. <laughs> um, but I've switched to Apple now does like sleep mode. And when you wake mm -hmm. up, it doesn't show you your notifications. It just says the time of day. It says the weather, you know, you can dismiss that, but um, that has, that has helped a little bit. I'm, I'm better some days than I am others, but um, I've, I think it's, I think it's important. I haven't quite been able to um, really separate myself as much as I'd like in yeah. the, in the mornings, but um, we'll see. It's a journey. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of journey uh, we were talking before we started recording, you are, man, you, you have got to be one of the photographers that I know that are living the life, right? You, like you said, you just bought a house. You got this beautiful new spot for that's dedicated to, this kind of thing and, and content creation and all that at the house. You're a good looking guy living in, in Southern California, shooting beautiful women with a Fuji X 100 S off to your right there. Like how do, how do people that, that want to get there? What's the path? How do you get to do that and be successful? I mean, you know, obviously you're going to need to be a good shooter, but there's more to it, Michael. So tell us what's the, what's the secret to becoming Michael Sasser? All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for that long list of uh, compliments. It's amazing. Um, it's true. It, this uh, it's interesting. The last, last two or three years is when my business has really started to thrive. Um, I've been, you know, I've been sharing a lot about my business, but I mean, if I look, if I look back, you know, I've, the first time I ever made money, uh, I'm 35 now. The first time I ever made money using a camera, I was 21. So I'm like 14 years deep into, right. you know, something to do with the photography business. And it can be exciting to, um, you know, be like, man, photography sounds fun. Let me buy a camera and I'll get started and I can make a hundred thousand dollars a year. And, uh, you know, it's, some people are able to do that. No yeah. question. Some people are able to do that, but it's, you know, it really is a journey. You have to get comfortable with, pricing yourself appropriately. You have to get comfortable putting yourself out there for fear of being rejected. That if you put an ad out, nobody, nobody calls you, are you going to be okay with that? Are you going to feel defeated? You have to get comfortable, um, you know, in the boudoir space, you have to be comfortable with the judgment that comes along with it. Yeah. You know, for everybody who's giving you a high five saying like, what a cool job you have. There's somebody else judging you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's a lot that you have to um, get comfortable with. Um, and, uh, so, I mean, I don't know, there, there are things you can do, <laughs> but those are honestly, those are the things that I see that hold most people back more than, more than anything else, as I'm sure is in most careers, you know, if you yeah. want to be a, I don't know, especially anything in the arts, especially yeah. anything in the arts, you got to get over a lot of things mentally before you're able to do it. We were talking about, uh, I was listening to something that, um, there's on clubhouse, uh, this guy, miles, I can't remember his last name but he's been doing these thursday morning um chats and one of the topics was about how photographers uh want to take the good picture and have that be enough like i'm a good photographer what else do you want from me like i just want to take the pictures for somebody to find my website and then hire me and i think a lot of that is based around that people are afraid of rejection right if they're never putting themselves out there to get work they never have a chance to get rejected there if only people are knocking on their door and then they can say yes or no, or I'm available or not, or whatever, have that conversation. There's not as much rejection involved. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, uh, yeah, I mean, 
This has been uh, this has been really good. I've been able to do kind of exactly what I want to do. I remember when I was like 20, uh, 22, and I was out shooting high school sports photography, uh, kids sports photography, and then I was shooting some headshots for actors in Denver. And I was, you know, whatever. Somebody called me up. Hey, I got this something going. Just something I didn't want to shoot. And I remember talking to my parents about it. And I was like, I don't want to shoot anything I don't want to shoot and get unless... And even if I'm getting paid for it, I only want to do the, I only want to get paid for the things I want to shoot. And otherwise I don't want to take a picture. Mm-hmm. I think it was like a very narrow minded mentality. Yeah. Artiste. Um, yeah. I'm an artiste. I'm only, I should, I've done my leg work. I'm 24, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and so I remember that mentality. And even now, even now that I get to do a ton of of what I like to do. If there's an opportunity to, you know, meet somebody or go down this path or try something or, you know, I'll, I'll do it. You never know what opportunity will follow. You never know what skill you learned at this thing that will help you three, four years down the road. And I actually, I just booked two shoots in Hawaii um, for next month. And they came as a result of um, like, shooting people for free in Hawaii and then putting together a Hawaii website. And then so cool. um, it's just like little, little things like that. They kind of snowball and it's hard to when snowball you, when your ball is very small at the beginning. When you, when you book a shoot in Hawaii, are you like, how does, what are the logistics of that? Are they paying for your flight and hotel and the whole nine yards and you just show up or how does that work? So or you just charge more? I'm, I'm the kind of person who like, I love to travel. And yeah. this is the way that I put it. If it's a place that I want to go, I don't charge you from tra- for travel. If it's a place that I don't want to go, you're just going to have to fly to LA. So mm-hmm. um, if somebody says, hey, I... nothing wrong with Nebraska, <laughs> but somebody <laughs> says, hey, I'm in Nebraska. Do you ever come out to Nebraska to shoot? I'd love to hire you coming out here and shoot. I'll say plane flights to LA or what are $250 round trip, $300 round trip. Just come out here. We'll shoot in my space um it's it's beautiful you know you come on out if somebody yep. says hey i live in hawaii and i'd like to book you for a shoot great i want to go there anyways i'm just going to charge you my normal photography rates and i'll just go out to hawaii for a week and enjoy myself and make a little bit of money while i'm there so that's mm-hmm. kind of how i do it i got some good advice one time that just said you know people were asking like how much should i charge for travel and there's some people that are like you need to include meals you need to include, you know, what, I, you know, all these things, rental cars and, you know, your time away a day that you're not there is a day that you could be shooting back home, making money. Fair. And somebody's response was, that depends on how much you want to travel. If you don't, if you don't want to be there, if you'd rather be at home making money, then charge them a bunch for that day. Mm-hmm. If you'd rather be in that place traveling, then don't charge them that much. So that's kind of how I've, how I've done my, like, do I charge for travel? It's a place I want to be like, I'm, I'm not going to charge you for, uh, to get myself down there. I'm just, I'm just going to go. Yeah. Yeah. Not nickel and dime. I love that. That's refreshing. And again, that keeps it simple. And that I think it, 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 from the, from my standpoint, it increases your just sort of, I want to work with this guy, you know, from the person that, that requested you. And you're like, you know what, I was going to go in there anyway. So I'm just going to go and, you know, meet me in Waikiki at this time. And we're going to do the shoot, you know, that's, that's exactly. fantastic. You know, the other thing that, sh- that strikes me about, about Michael Sasser, other than that other list of compliments I gave you is you're, <laughs> you, you seem to be very, you have the gene of, of, knowledge right and uh, not so much you know the sage type knowledge but you are you have a thirst for knowledge and you learn and incorporate new things into your business for example the education side of your business so you're not just doing you're not just a photographer you are also an educator and you teach on the business side and client acquisition and delivery and shooting and hardware and soft, all that stuff. You teach that. So it's not, can you take us through that and what, and, and how the evolution or the, the bifurcation of Michael Sasser happened from just quote, just being a, a shooter into being a shooter slash entrepreneur educator. Uh, yeah, man. I, I mean, I, have always loved to learn it like learning fascinates me. 
Um, yeah. I never, I was never like a great student, but if, if I'm interested in something like it, I, I used to say I would have these like spurts of addiction. Like I would be addicted to some like obsessed with something for a couple of months. I would accelerate really fast at it. And then I'd kind of plateau. I'd go on to the next thing. So um, I've always loved uh, learning and I've loved learning how to learn as well. It's funny. We were out juggling um, some, I've got this uh, lime tree and uh, we had a couple of friends over and everybody was juggling and they were trying to do this thing where they were passing it to each other and they couldn't do it. And I was like, hold on, you guys got to stop. One person's going to juggle and then the other person's just going to take one lime and toss it in. Like the second person can't juggle at first. This guy has to, he has to, you have to do a perfect pass. So he figures it out and then you can do the opposite and then you can both do it. And one of my mm-hmm. friends goes, man, that guy knows how to learn. <laughs> and <laughs> that's what I've been really uh, drawn to. Like, how do you uh, grow quickly, essentially? <clears throat> and so I've loved being able to share that with other people as well. So for me, you know, um, with photography, it started, you know, teaching with photography started uh, with video, actually. So I was a wedding videographer for like six years. Oh. Um and that was great. When I found Boudoir, I kind of stopped shooting wedding films, but I was like, I already know how to shoot video. Why don't I shoot video, but for Boudoir? And not that many people were doing this at the time. So um, I got asked, can you show us how to do the same? So that was my first intro into teaching video. I taught with AIBP, Association of International Boudoir Photographers. And I, I really had a great time. I was like, okay, I, I taught this. This was fun. I created my online course for how to shoot video. And then, um, and then that was like, well, I'm, I made a video course. Why don't I just toss something on YouTube? I see people making YouTube videos all the time. It's tutorial. Like I could, I could do that. Why don't I just make a video? So that's, I made my lens video. What's the best lens for boudoir? The internet loves gear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I did that and I kind of forgot about it. <clears throat> and then I started getting emails and, and some, some people asking some questions and some more people were buying my course. I was like, where's this coming from? I saw I was coming from YouTube. Uh, all these people were finding me on, on through this video. And I just decided, I was like, you know what? Why don't I just dedicate one video a week? I'll take some of my knowledge and I'll share it with the, there's almost no boudoir information for free out there. Um, yeah. There's a couple of educators that, that sell courses. Um, I'm pretty much the only person who shares um, this kind of knowledge on YouTube. There, there's a couple who've made a video or two, but consistently. And I've found such joy from it um and it's funny so you you gave me those compliments um and i try and like one of my biggest not one of my biggest fears but i'm i'm afraid of like getting a big head and then like dismissing people for whatever and so it's really easy for me to dismiss compliments and things so i'll get messages of people saying you know the thank you so much for introducing me or i shot my girlfriend or you know whatever it is and it's really easy to just kind of push it down and just like ignore it and go back to making stuff but um, it's crazy the connections that it's brought me from, you know, I mean, really all over the world. It's been, yeah, it's been pretty great. That's great, man. That's, that is great. And that's, a, yeah, I love to see that. I love to see the people that, that, I mean, you're, like you said, you're a lifelong learner, right? So you're still figuring it out and who knows what you may evolve to in a couple of years from now, it may be completely different, but it's, I think it's the point that you are, you are open and willing to that evolution versus, Hey, you the 24 year old version of you. I figured this out. I'm going to just be on these train tracks until the end of time. You have no idea where, where things are going and you're open to that. I think that's, that's huge. I'm, I'm like that as well. Like I'm always changing stuff and like, well, how can this be better? And, you know, can I try this? And Hey, here's a cool course. I want to take that course. Cause I want to learn how to do fill in the blank SEO, Facebook advertising, whatever, you know, it's always, absolutely. You know, there's always something it, new to learn. And it's important to know that like, not everybody you see who's like doing really well or teaching this stuff, like figured it all out on their own. Mm-hmm. right like it's a culmination of having deep conversations with other photographers and it's a culmination of um solving problems like the reason why i'm on a wait list right now is because i was stuck and i spoke with somebody and they were like what are you what are you doing uh, uh my friend julie uh julie soccer she's a boudoir photographer on the east coast and she's like do you need to take clients i mean you're doing a lot of education and um sounds like you've been saving up and i was like 
I, I don't, I don't need to take as many clients as I, I have been, but I, but I enjoy it. You know, that's kind of the emotional side of what I do is seeing these people and the, and their uh, reactions as well as, you know, the income that comes from it. Yeah. And, but that got me thinking like, okay, do I need to take them this moment? And that answer mm -hmm. was no. And so that led into the wait list. So I was like, I'm going to take the ability to inquire down and just put them on a wait list and I'll figure out what I want to do with them in a month. And that led to why don't I have all of the phone calls on one day? I'll sell it through email. And then that led to why don't I compartmentalize my, um, my shoots uh, into, into shorter periods of time. So all these, all these things that you're like, man, these people are whatever. They have all the answers. Like they don't. Yeah. But they ask questions. They also ask questions. Um, and then when they find answers that they like, you know, then they use them or they share them. How are you, what, what percentage of your, of the sort of pie of Michael Sasser is the education side or the, you know, the online course membership side versus the actual sessions and shooting side? Like what, what, what's the breakdown there? Uh, like where I put my time or, or income, like is most of your income coming from straight sessions and photography, or is it 50, 50 with sort of the online course sales? How does that look? So basically the way that I've, I've always had a goal to have four to six shoots a month, um, at whatever my, you know, when I was 26 years old, didn't cost that much to live. Mm -hmm, <laughs> so yeah. it was like at a thousand dollars a client. And now yeah. that's come up, that's come up much more. Now my, uh, now my average is around 3,500 to $4,000 a client. Yep. And so with, with that, um, once I was on cruise control a couple of years ago, I kind of put all my time and effort and energy into, uh, the education side of things. How do I, how do I sell more courses? How do I reach more people? How do I, um, create better products? Um, mm -hmm. how do I help more photographers? All of these things. And so 2019 was, was mostly like almost all of my free time went into online courses. Now that's on more cruise control. Um, now a lot of my time is focused on getting this new system in place, which is starting to work really, really well for me. Mm -hmm. And after that, then I'll go back to focusing on, I want to come out with a few new courses this year. Um, but the nature of, so, so a couple of things, the reason why I run my business the way I do. So I didn't, like I mentioned, I fear burnout. So by limiting myself to four to six sessions a month, I'm probably not going to hit burnout. I know photographers who are doing like 20 sessions a month and they are crushing it. They're making insane money doing shoots. And, uh, but they're having these like breakdowns and they're needing these long vacations and they're needing to bear on associate shooters and they're needing to, you know, all of these things. Um, and I never want that to be my story. I'm willing to take less for, for not having to have that. So my, one of the ways that I've solved that is to create this product, uh, you know, this course that helps other photographers and then have some income come in from that. And so, um, I'd say about, um, uh, maybe 2019, it was about 50, 50, 2019 mm -hmm. is about 50, 50. And since then as exponential growth, I mean, because it's not associated with my time, the courses have really, um, really increase. I mean, my presets that, you know, they're pretty much one click to help photographers just like cruise through the editing. I'm such a, like, if it hasn't been clear time is like, I don't want to waste my time. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so ha having a preset that just like gets you 90% there, that's, uh, been really, really profitable for, uh, for helping out photographers in that way. I released a contract to help photographers keep their business safe. That's super affordable. Um, the same contract that I use that's brought me a ton of income. So, uh, I feel like I've, I've been able to make some smart decisions, um, that have allowed me to take some chances and it's been awesome. That's really cool, man. That's really cool. Uh, every time I talk to you, it's inspirational. It's like, ah, you know, cause I, when we, when we had our first conversation, I think the impetus of that as was, I had already purchased your course. I think so. I think I'd already purchased it. And I was like, I got to interview this guy and I interviewed you and and here we are again, like a year plus, two years later, um, on the, on the management side of the business, you know, so stepping out of the, stepping out of the, the online course sales and the content creation side and moving over into photography and ingestion 
and client management and delivery and all that. Are you, are you doing all that by hand or do you use like, like software as a service programs like bloom.io or HoneyBook or, or anything like that to book and schedule clients? So I'm on, um, I'm on 17 hats. Mm, okay. So, yeah. so basically I'll give you a quick, I think I'm going to do this pretty quickly on my workflow sure. start to finish. So somebody signs up for the email list that goes into MailChimp. They get emails every three days, kind of hearing something, something that I've, I want to talk about related to boudoir, stay top of mind. Uh, let them know that I'm still here, that they still have a chance to book. Mm -hmm. um, I send out an email that says phone calls are available this weekend. Sign up for your slot here. They go sign up for that slot. We get on the phone. If they're into it, I book them on the phone. They pay on the phone. Then they go into 17 hats, sign the contract through 17 hats. Once they do that, I've got a series of seven emails. This is in my course, uh, seven emails that goes out to them that talk about um, what to wear, uh, tells them basically not to spray tan. It talks about uh, pricing and it has pictures of out sample albums. It's got, um, it sent out an email two days before that reminds them of the time of their shoot, reminds them uh, not to uh, wash their hair in the morning. It reminds them of the address and parking information and what to bring. All of those things, I don't have to do any of it. Yeah. It's all automated. I basically set in their time. Their shoot date is whatever, April 25th. And I click that button and then it's going to uh, send out the emails, time sensitive related to that. Um, then they come in, shoot, we shoot all in one day, uh, hair and makeup, photo shoot, I edit, and then we do their sales session, design their album all in one day. Um, take payment, they leave. I send them the digitals the next day. Uh, and then at the end of that week, I order out all of the albums of the clients. So it's not a whole lot of time that's wasted. It's not a whole lot of back and forth. Um, it's a lot of automation, um, a lot of things that are just set up that work. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that uh, has allowed me to, I mean, it's basically like having an assistant, right? As I was going to say, in the old days, it would have been all those things like, hey, what do I park and what do I wear and and all that. And the follow-up and the reminders that your appointment is tomorrow, make sure you do X, Y, and Z. All that stuff would have been a person right? Getting on the phone or emailing and having that dialogue, or even it would have been you wasting your time doing that. But you've got, uh, you've got droids in place that are taking care of all that for you. It's amazing. Yeah. That's cool, man. That is, that is really cool. Like I said, inspirational is all that in the course that you sell, like all the, the flow of how all that works. So since I just started doing the, um, since I just started doing the wait list, uh, none of that's in the course. Um, mm -hmm. so that is all, uh, you know, the way I have it set up right now, there's a marketing section. Yep. All of my emails leading up to the photo shoot is included. Um, the phone script that I use. So on my phone calls, basically exactly what I'm talking to them about, how I bring yep. up pricing and all those things. That's all in the course, um, posing, uh, how I price my sessions and how you can too. I mean, I mean, it's really, if you, if you're like, I love boudoir, I've started to take some pictures. Can I turn this into a business? Um, this is, I, I don't know anything else out there like it for the price. And then also if you're making like, you know, okay, you start, you're making 20, $30,000 a year, but you can't figure out how to, how to break 50 or a hundred. Um, it's great. If you're already a full-time shooter making six figures, you know, it's, it's probably still worth it just to, just to hear a little bit about, you know, different ways that other people run their business, but Absolutely. Yeah. probably won't change your life. Um, but it depends. I mean, I just had somebody message me. We were talking about uh, imposter syndrome and he messaged me. He's like, this might sound a little strange. I was uncomfortable posting it in your Facebook group, but um, I just did a, a, had a $3,400 session. This guy, this, this male photographer, um, he just got started about a year ago and he's like, I feel almost guilty when somebody spends that much with me. I'm not sure if they're getting that much value. I'm like, did they leave happy? Yes. Then, uh, you know, amazing. Um, that's, that's what you're going for. Like your idea of what you're worth will become more comfortable through time. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, those are all the tools that he was able to receive to sort of get to that point. Um, which is just, I mean, it's just awesome. I gotta, I gotta re-dive back into that course again, man. So <laughs> where, where is that course at? So if people are listening, they're like, holy crap, I need that. What's, what's, where should they go to, to sign up for it? Yeah. The, uh, the courses are just at, at the website, boudoircourses.com. 
um, super easy to remember. There's a, a handful over there. Um, there's a video that gives you a couple tips. If you just want to watch the video, basically talk about the way that I price my sessions. Um, and it, it was like, of all the things that you could do, there's two things in there that, um, if, if you're not already doing them, will change your photography life forever. Like, Love it. I mean, it, it really will. If you're just starting out, if you've given everything away for one price, like go watch this video and it really will doing, doing, doing this thing, which is pretty crazy, but there, so there's a free video in there. I talk about the course and what's included and all that stuff. And you can read testimonials. And, um, but if you, you know, if you're at a point where you're not ready to spend money or something like that, like really YouTube videos are, um, there's a ton of, there's like 75 of them. I talk about all kinds of things, business things, tips on shooting, all that stuff. That's a great way. Or if you want to join my Facebook group, we're talking about all kinds of things. You can ask questions. I, I pop my head in there and answer. Um, that's just facebook.com slash group slash SAS or education. Love it. Love it. All right. So last question here, and this is, this is the elephant in the room question. Are you ready for this? Always. All right. There's a hundred megapixel camera sitting to your right there, <laughs> which is the literal elephant in the room. Tell us about that decision. That's a Fuji X100S 100 megapixel beastie right there. This guy has, uh, it can't, oh, there it goes. Oh, there it is. There it is. What uh, this is in the world. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, uh, all right. So here's, here's the story on my Fuji GFX, uh, thing. So I've, I'm not camera loyal. So I got my first camera was a Nikon D80. I used that. I had the D300, the D2X. Um, I had the D3 and the D4. And then I switched to Canon. Nikon was lagging behind on video a lot. And I was starting to shoot a lot more video. So I switched to Canon. 1DX, 51, 2, the whole nine. Yep. Um, and then Sony came out with their A7S. And I had never seen video that clear before. And so I got one of those to try it out. And I was just like, I, I really couldn't, I really couldn't believe it. So then for a while I was shooting Canon for photo and Sony for video until they came out with the A9 and that did photos just as good as Canon and it did video better. And I was like, great, I'm going to sell all my Canon stuff. I was on Sony for a long time. And then, um, I wanted to kind of get outside of my routine. Everything that I've talked about today has been about like efficiency and workflow and all that stuff. And I was like, I feel like I need to detach myself from the need to have that in my, in my shooting. And so I tried the GFX 50 R and a manual focus lens, the opposite, the literal opposite of efficiency. Mm -hmm. um, but I fell in love with it. I fell in love with shooting with it. I fell in love with colors. So I've been shooting a, basically manual focus on this GFX uh, with a 65 millimeter 1.4. Now, um, they have a 63 millimeter 2.8, but the depth of field isn't that great. The focus is slow. It's, it's not really like a super, uh, light shooting experience. So I might as well shoot manual focus anyway. So I've been waiting for them to come out with a lens that auto focuses that's close to the 50 millimeter equivalent range. And they announced the 80 millimeter 1.7. So, uh, and this GFX, um, in the smaller body that also has phase detect autofocus. So the two of those together should basically act like a digital SLR, um, but with a medium format sensor. So um, I'm just, just become really stubborn and want like the coolest, you know, whatever the edge that I can get. And uh, Fuji's just, I mean, it's just crazy. I, you, you could do all this with full frame. You could do all that, you know, if you put the picture side by side, maybe you couldn't tell, but I think just over, over the years, I've just really, really become attached. And this is like the next, um, you know, the next block in that. In yeah. That and, journey. and a lot of it, it's about you too, right? It's about what makes you happy to hold in your hands and to shoot with. And there's a certain amount of, you know, gear acquisition syndrome in there, which is, you know, in, in certain doses is totally fine. Right. And, and it's like, why not? Like, uh, we were, I was talking to my girlfriend the other day, we were talking about, it's like professional bowlers, right? A professional bowler will show up with his case, with his beautiful, you know, bowling ball made from, you know, endangered species pearls and all, <laughs> you know, you don't need that to knock pins down, but you want it. And it just makes, you know, it's just, it's that, or, or the, the pool shark that shows up with his golden cue, you know, to shoot. So it's, 
Yeah, absolutely. And not that that camera is superfluous like that, but you know, the, but it's it's a powerful camera that probably does more than you'll ever need it to do, right? It is it is that thing. Absolutely. The whole brand loyalty, you're like, you have to have this or that, you know, there's the saying, um, the best camera is the one you have on you. Yeah. True. Also true. The best camera for you is the one that you feel the best when you're using. Does it open up your creativity when you hold it in your hands? Does it yeah. allow you to think in a, in a different way? And that could be for something as little as the way the grip feels or yeah. that focal length or the color of the stripe on the lens or whatever it is that gives you that, um, that sort of freedom is, is worth, you know, is to me worth w whatever it is that you're going to spend on it. That's and right. so um, that's been a big, uh, you know, when somebody's like, Oh, it's always funny to me that <laughs> people care so much about what other people shoot. Mm -hmm. It's like, Oh no, you're on Nikon. That's a crap. Like you're not shooting it. Why do you care? Right. Uh, right. But it, it's, it's been a blast. I just did my first shoot with it yesterday. Um, and it was, uh, it was awesome. I, I had a really good time. Um, but the, everything kind of hinges on the 80 millimeter. If it's too long or the focus doesn't really hit, then it won't be solving any of my problems. It'll just be more money. Right. So we'll, uh, it's supposed to come in tomorrow and I'm, I'm amped for it. So I'll I want to hear all about that, man. Well, that you said your parents are showing up. So that lens is going to show up during the window when your parents are there, you're not going to get a chance to play with it. So <laughs> I'll just take happen. some portraits of them. Yeah. There you go. I'll take some portraits <laughs> of them. I'll, I'll set up a shoot in a couple of days, but I don't need a, I don't need a boudoir shoot to tell if it's uh, going to do what I need it to, but yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I can't wait to start, start playing around with it and feel, uh, just feel really good about it. there's something about shooting with new gear. That's just nice. I've been on yeah. uh, this, the GFX for a year and a half. And before that I was on the Sony a nine for like two, two and a half years. Yeah. Um, yeah. so, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm amped. It's been a blast. It reminds me of this. There's a Japanese word. I was stationed in Japan for a couple of years in the, as a the combat photographer in the military and the air force. And, the uh there's a, a phrase i learned while i was there it's called suzushi suzushi mm -hmm. and it basically describes the feeling that you have after you've like say been working out or something and you're hot and then a cool breeze hits you that instant feeling right there is called suzushi <laughs> i use that term to describe when you get new gear in and you're like oh this is just you know this is just you know, I used to, I used to shoot Nikon. I remember getting those gold boxes when you got, got a new camera and you open it up you're like, Oh, this is just beautiful. I can't, I can't, I love it. So, and this is great. It's always good catching up with you. Uh, thanks for taking the time to do this. What, uh, where, you know, you mentioned a couple of URLs. Oh, Oh, I have one question before I, before we do the close there, what you mentioned the lens you mentioned one of your YouTube or your most popular and your initial YouTube videos was about the best lens for boudoir. What is the best lens for boudoir? You know, of course, depend sensor notwithstanding sensor size. So, um, I'll just do a equivalence. Um, yeah. so, um, you got right. Like a 35 on an APS-C is equivalent of a 50 millimeter on full frame and a mm -hmm. 65 millimeter or 63 millimeter on medium format is the equivalent of 50 millimeter on full frame. So we're just gonna do the full frame equivalent. So um, I, I show examples of this in, in my YouTube video, but basically for me, um, I, think, I think 50 is the sweet spot for me. If you're shooting in a smaller room, then I think that 35 is, is really great, but there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, 50 millimeter to me, um, removes the, the lens. It, it looks more, it looks more real, looks more natural. Uh, you, I would say that with, uh, there's no distortion, um, like will creep up in the 35 and there's less compression than will show up in an 85. So for boudoir, I think boudoir is really personal. It's intimate. It's about showing this person who they are. And I want to remove the camera aspect of that. Mm -hmm. um and so with that i think the 50 does that the 35 is great it can show a ton of location um if you get in real close it's it's even more personal but sometimes that can be uh, like a little bit jarring the 85 you have to stay much further away and the compression sort of gives it a um it can be either dreamy or it can be um like really impactful but not always about like the person more so that the compression is added. So for me, um, 
if the goal is to show the person and them and remove a lot of the other distractions, then I think the, the 50 is really the answer to that. Yeah. Um, but you could ask 30 different photographers and they, they probably give you different answers, but that's, you know, that's kind of where I sit. Um, and over the last probably five years, um, I use a 50 equivalent for 99% of my shots. I'll pull this 40 millimeter out. So this is like a 35 equivalent. Um, when I'm doing, uh, shots and I, in my new spot, I've got an outdoor shower it's very tiny. And so I'll pull this out to do shots in there. Uh, but other than that, that 50 equivalent doesn't leave my lens for anything. I love it. I love it. Which makes it, that, that's a, we'll leave that for another conversation. Just the, this, the lens choice discussion and the debate between fixed focal, focal length lenses and zoom lenses and which is better. And the only, you know. the, the only difference for me is that uh, fixed focal lengths, typically you can do a wider aperture. Okay, yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not into like, ooh, but it's so much sharper or whatever. Like if you want blurrier photos, it's no brainer. You, you can yeah. do a, a fixed, fixed lens. Other than that, if that's not really important to you, then like your 24 to 70, if you're gonna shoot at 2.8 anyways, just use a 24 to 70. Right, right. And you're shooting mostly available light or using strobe? 100% available light. I'm, wow. I'm a little stubborn in that way. I love um, if that. You, if anybody's interested in seeing it, like boudoir type images with light, um, you want to check out Pratik. Shot by Pratik, P-R-A-T-I-K. Um, he's a retoucher who started shooting uh, some boudoir stuff. And uh, his is more like fashion boudoir, but um, he lights everything and he's real good at it. <laughs> Is that Pratik Naik? Is that yeah, Pratik Naik? Yeah, yeah, I've had him on the show a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, oh, he, awesome. he came out and brought somebody and did did some shots here and like, holy goodness, that dude knows what he's doing. He does yeah. stuff with lights I could never. And one of the nicest people on the planet, and a great educator and communicator as well. So yeah, really cool, awesome, great minds flock together i love it i love it cool man so give us some urls where should people go to you know check out your stuff or you know sign up for your class you mentioned that you know or get in the facebook group where's all that stuff at i'll just do these um so uh the courses boudoircourses.com my facebook group if you just search for uh boudoir or sorry uh, sasser education uh that's what my facebook group is called um my youtube if you just type in my name, I'll, I'll pop up or, or boudoir, I'll pop up. Um, my Instagram is my business name, Sasser Sales Boudoir. I should really just consolidate everything and have one name across the board. Um, yeah. But the boudoir courses, I really wanted to make that separate for, I don't know what it'll turn into, but those are pretty much the things, Instagram, my Facebook group, um, the courses, um, you know, my website, Sasser Sales Boudoir, if you want to check out how I actually structure my website and what the client's experience is like going through that. That'd be something to check out for sure. Awesome. Michael Sasser, thank you so much, man. Congratulations again on, on continuing to crush it. I can't wait to check in with you again next time. You know, you mentioned, we won't even go into this, but you mentioned before we started recording that you uh, are dabbling in helicopter flight now. <laughs> That's right. I got my license in December. It's been a blast, man. The, and the helicopters are not easy to fly, right? They're, they're much they are harder. They're not easy to fly. Way. Yeah, but I recommend yeah. anybody who's interested, you can just do a discovery flight. It's like a 30 minute flight where an instructor will take you up for your first, you got to learn sometimes. So they've got these discovery flights, which is 30 minutes. They take off and hover and, and put you into forward flight. Then they pass over the controls to you and you can turn the helicopter and stuff. And then, uh, so you can fly on your first day, you wow. can pilot on your first day. And then they take the controls and bring it in for landing and everything. But uh, it's a rush like nothing else. I, I recommend it to everybody. All right. Well, maybe, maybe at some point in the future, until then, I'm going to stick with my drone because I, I crash that works, man. and no love lost except a couple hundred dollars. So. <laughs> so, cool, man. All right, Michael Sasser, congratulations on everything. Have fun with your parents and enjoy that new camera, man. Uh, I'm jealous. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care. This is Twitter.